Your first Flutterflow app with Gemini linked up has never been simpler. What I'm gonna do today is walk you through how to build a minimum viable product or MVP um, just to test out a use case using a quick interface on Flutterflow, connect it up with Gemini's um, large language model or chatbot, and ultimately uh, publish it to the web. It's going to be a fully functioning chatbot, which you can use and test um, in your environment. Um, if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and if you've got any ideas of what you'd like to see um, more videos on around Flutterflow and Gemini, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and let's go. Okay, head on over to flutterflow.io if you haven't already. And uh, what Flutterflow is, is really a low code, no code environment um, by ex Google engineers that have created a fun interface to create very easy in, um, applications. Um, I use them for minimum viable products uh, to get something stood up really quickly, just test a proof of concept and see if it's going to fly. All right. Um, yep, so as you can see, Google Cloud Partner. And what we're going to do now is just go up and sign in or start for free. So if you haven't already signed up, go click start for free. And um, what it's going to do now is take you through the wizard to get going. All right, just click on allow. And what we're going to do is just sign in with Google because that's the accounts I'm using. Choose the account. All right, just answer a couple of questions that they're asking you for. Um, and actually, one of the um, people on the YouTube community asked me to make something around Flutterflow. Um, and I had a look into it and I found that it was really good. All right, and let's hit continue. All right, and that's it. That's your installation and setup done. What we're gonna do right now though is create a brand new project to create a um, Gemini application. So what we're gonna do is have a look over here. And you can see some samples and some templates um, of ways and means of doing your own thing. But what we're going to do today is just keep it really simple and um, create a project and call it a name. So this is go my Gemini project. All right, we're going to click on create blank. All right, it's going to ask you then to create the project. Uh, these are the names, the package name. Um, and ultimately any themes and styles that you would like. All right, we want to enable the web because we want to publish this to a uh, site so we can test it um, out in the real world. We don't want to do Firebase because we don't need to, uh, not for this particular project, and click Start Building. All right, so if you're unfamiliar with Flutterflow, um, then stick around. Um, if you already know about Flutterflow, um, feel free to skip ahead to the connection of Gemini. But basically what Flutterflow is, is just an integrated development environment um, based on the web and a really simple intuitive interface to drag and drop items onto a canvas, which are ultimately then um, going to be displayed um, for consumption. All right, so on the left hand side over here is your common elements and widgets. So you've got text boxes, containers, um, buttons, you've got images, you've got check boxes. So basically all the items that you would need in a modern application uh, for web or for desktop. Um, and you can then also have a space over here where you can see which pages you've got, which um, areas you've added and um, any of your uh, hierarchies of all your containers and all your information. I'll show you that in a second. And um, if you've got any pages, you click on the left over here and you can ultimately see all the pages that you've created. But let's click on this over here. And what we can do on the right hand side, if we click on this title over here, we want to change this title. On the right hand side, you will see your properties. So the properties are anything that you can configure and change for that particular item that you've selected. Um, if you want to select the entire um, app, then you click on there. But if you just want the text box, click on the text box and you'll see that this on the left hand side changes ever so slightly. All right, so if we wanted to change the um, information, we can just type in here text is going to be my Gemini app. All right, and if you scroll down, you've got some uh, different types of properties. You can underline it. You can make the weights a bit bigger. Um, this is to 500. 
Uh, you can change the text color, you can put spacing, you can left align, center align, um, etc. So again, quite a lot of options and information that you can play around with to make your app look as nice and neat as you would like. All right, so we're gonna change this color over here. Um, we can make it a different color if you wanted. So you can do this color, um, but let's just keep it back to the default color. All right, so really basic, really simple, um, and I'm not going to do much detail of how all these controls and all these elements work. What we're gonna do is get um, our basic interface set up so that we can connect up to Gemini and create our own chatbot. All right, so what we wanna do first is create a container. And let's pop a container in over here. And let's just drag it across. And this container is basically going to hold our output. All right, we're going to put some padding in, left, 10, padding on the top, 10, right, 10, just so it doesn't overflow, and 10. All right, and um, that's basically what it's going to look like. And now this is obviously not going to take into account every single device, every single thing like that. Uh, this is just a quick uh, test for how it's going to look. All right, what we want to do now is pop in a text box. All right, so this is again where our information is going to be stored. So if you click on text and you'll see the current text over here is hello world. Let's just put here um, Let's just pop in output for the time being and what we can do is um, then go down over here and we're going to create a button. So let's just drag a quick button over here. And this is going to be our submit button. Okay. And what we're going to look for now is a text edit. All right, so text field. So if you just type in text field, you'll see the form elements over here. So this is where we're going to type our prompt. Okay. All right, so just drag it just above the button and click on the text field over here. So let's just type in, um, let's just give it a good name. So we can just call this TXT prompt. Scroll down until you get to the label properties. And as you can see, the default information is there. So let's just type in, um, what is your question? Okay, so this is basically going to be a little tiny thing that's above the text box and it's just going to highlight there for the user to make it quite intuitive to select something or to type something in. Right, then what we're going to do is let's click on our button. All right, we're going to rename our button. So on the top over here, uh, so this is the so good programming practices. This, um, make a good naming convention because if you've got lots of elements and you've got lots of buttons um, having good naming practices is always good um, good good to do All right so we can then obviously go down and click on text and change the button to submit and as you can see now in real time this is what our gemini app is starting to look like so at the top over here is going to be the response and the output what over here is going to be is the um, question we're asking and ultimately the submit button, right? We're gonna add in a clear all button um, after we've done the tests, right? So what we're gonna do is connect our submit button to our text box or text prompt and display an output over here. So to do that, really simple. So click on your button, make sure all your controls are set and let's go over to the left hand side over here and all you're gonna see is, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're gonna click see Gemini, all right? What we wanna do is enable Gemini, and it's gonna ask you for an API key, all right? So the easiest way to get an API key, if you've got Google Cloud um, and Vertex AI set up, you can go grab it from there, or if you're using the Dev Studio, you can grab it from there, but I'm gonna use the Dev Studio for the time being, so let's just open up um, ai.google.dev and click on get the API key. All right, um, once you're in here, there's a little um, button you can click, get API key. And if you've already created one, you can uh, just grab it. All right, so let's just grab this API key over here, copy it, 
and let's go back to Flutterflow. All right, so pop it into Flutterflow, and that's pretty much it to connect up to Gemini and the API and integration. So really as simple as that. So pretty, pretty fantastic. All right, so let's to go back to our app, just click on one of these little elements over here to bring you back to this canvas. All right, um, you can zoom in and zoom out if you'd like, um, but let's just leave it like it for the time being. Right, so next thing we want to do is connect up our submit button to the Gemini app. So let's click on submit, click on actions, and then action flow editor, click on open. All right, uh, you can use this uh, interface over here. So on tap, on double tap, or on long press, um, those are your different options over here. So on tap is fine. All right, we want to add an action. All right, so let's search for an action on the right hand side here and just type in Gemini. All right, so we've got three options here, generate text, count the tokens, and text from image. All right, we don't wanna do any of that. We wanna just do text, generate text, value that we're gonna basically um, pop in. So what is the text prompt? So we need to obviously grab this from the user interface of the app. So we just wanna grab this from the, uh, so click on that over there and go to widget state and you can go to available options, the text prompt. So this is the field that you're gonna have your users type in and ultimately click on that. All right, and what's the output variable name? So this is where it's gonna store the output. So this is called this response. And that's really it actually. All right, so you can click on close. Okay, so now the text prompt is connected up to the submit button. But now what we wanna do is connect our text to our output from the response. So really easy way to do that. Click on your text box and go to uh, text and click on the little configure icons over here. And you can click on action outputs and you'll see the response variable that we just created and pop that over there. So default variable name. So if you click and hover over there, it'll just say the default name if it can't return a response. Let's just hover over again. All right, so we can just say, um, let's just pop in result for the time being, and you'll see what it looks like in a second. All right, and confirm. All right, you can now obviously play with your colors. You can change a couple of things here. And um, like I said, this is not a tutorial on how Flutterflow works, just about how to connect up and create your first app. So what we can do now is give it a test, right? Uh, so we've pretty much connected up our text to our response. We've got a question and a prompt uh, box that we can ask what we want to type. Got a submit button, which is linked to Gemini. And ultimately, um, we've got everything and all the building blocks to get a, a working app going. So on the top right hand corner, there is a lightning bolt and we can click on that to run it in test mode. So let's do that. All right, so around about two to three minutes. Okay, so once it's done the um, uh, loading and the compiling, it's going to potentially sometimes show you a blank screen, which is a bit weird. But what I found is that all you do is click on one of these um, um, icons at the top over here, and it'll basically just bring it back into focus. All right, so here's our working app, and let's test if it works, obviously. All right, so here's result, as you can see. Um, what is your question? Like I said, there's just a little tiny little thing over there, so it allows the user to quickly and easily see what you want and then our submit button so let's just type here what is ai in two sentences um, make it fun and joyful all right and hit submit so this is now going to basically uh, call the gemini api and it's ultimately going to return a response all right, so as you can see, our app is working pretty well. There's probably a few things we can do to, to fix it up a little bit. All right, so what we can do now is ultimately um, look to enhance this and make it a little bit better and more, more user-friendly. So we can put a clear button in. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. This is in that session. All right, we want to end it, yes. Go back to our canvas. All right, so what we want to do now is add our clear button just to clear the uh, text box. Um, the output over here will remain the same because you might want to ask a follow-up question. All right, so what we can do is just go to the um, widget palette, click on button and drag it down 
and let's add a bit of padding to it. So let's just go T for T hop, which is 10, um, just to give it a bit of spacing. And like I said, you need to put some good variable names in over here. So let's just go button, so BTN, and let's call it clear, right? And hit the little tick mark. And what you can do now is go to text and write the name of the button. So we're gonna call it a clear button. And um, yeah, so that looks pretty good. And you can obviously change the colors, you can change the sizing, all those good things. But what we're gonna do now is add an action to clear the um, question. So we're gonna go over here and we can go to our actions. All right, you can go to the action flow editor or you can click add action over here. But I'm just gonna click on open over here, add action. And on the right hand side, you'll see something where you can select an action. So let's just go reset. Uh, reset text field fields and it's going to ask you which field do you want to clear so let's just tick uh, text prompt and that's it all right so if you want to clear this text output over here that involves a little bit more work um, out of scope for this particular video all right so that's basically what we've got and um, let's give it a test again and see if it all works okay so click on these icons at the top over here if you found that it doesn't work um, but what we can do now is say here what is flutter flow in two sentences hit submit all right so great give it us the answer and if we click on clear it should now reset our question so it's exactly what we wanted still got our original answer over there unless we want to check something so we could now basically um, do a follow-up question all right so that's great so now what we want to do is actually publish this app um, obviously you wouldn't publish this to the um, the world to to use but um, it needs a bit more finessing but let's show you how to do that real quickly so in that session yes and you can just close that tab all right so to uh, publish a app it's really simple all you do is you go down to the settings and integrations on the left hand side over here Yep, so what you're gonna do then is scroll down and go to web publishing. All right, and um, you can now basically look through these items over here. So this is the site's URL. So you can pop this in as any URL that you'd like. So if you wanna call your app um, my chatbot underscore five, it obviously needs to make sure that it's unique. Um, but uh, yeah, you can pop that in over there. So you can just copy that once you've done it. SEO title. So if you wanted to add SEO to it, you could add it, site description, page title, um, etc. And there are some options uh, that require the paid version, um, but you can just um, uh, play around with these over here. So if you wanted to do it on your custom domain, so you want to connect it up to your website, easy, easy to do. All right, then some more information on the right hand side. So have a play around with these particular um, items over here um, if it suits your business case or your needs. All right, so really quickly, let's just click on the word publish. So once it's completed the publishing, it'll take a couple of minutes. You'll now see that here's the live website, last deployment, and you can click on this uh, little button over here and it'll take you to your application that you've just created. All right, so I'm obviously on a desktop. Um, that's why it looks so wide, um, but let's just make this a bit smaller so it looks like a normal cell phone application. And we can just type in here, how easy was Flutter Flow to develop apps? All right, and hit the submit button and you've now got a um, you've now got a working app. All right, like I said, needs a bit of finessing and a bit of uh, work, but again, really simple end-to-end -end flow of how to connect up Gemini, how to connect up your text boxes, clear a um, clear your question, and publishing the Flutter Flow app um, for quick, easy MVP. Right, so if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, um, and if you would like to have any further information on um, future videos, um, or if you've got any suggestions on any future videos, please uh, let me know. Thank you for watching.